It is interesting to know that Tabo Monastery is also known as the Ajanta of the Himalayas. We will visit the caves where the monks used to meditate. A goodbye to Tabo finally and we move through the beautiful valley with the Pin River flowing along. We then reach the beautiful Dhankar Monastery which rests on the edge of a cliff. The drive along the Pin Valley will not allow you to blink your eyes. We then reach the Kungri Monastery which is a must watch attraction in the Pin Valley. The journey then resumes through the breathtaking views and we finally reach Kaza. These are just the glimpses of today's journey that you will see with me. This is Rakesh Jain and welcome to my channel Wanderer. Good morning. This is the day 6 of our journey. I am in Tabo right now and uh, we reached yesterday at Tabo at around uh, 9 pm and we are staying right now in the Funchuk uh, homestay and uh, after the breakfast we will be heading towards uh, Kaza. As you can see it's pretty cold out in the morning and I am here at uh, around 6.30 am. I was trying to see if I can capture the uh, sunrise and meanwhile the place where I am standing is the helipad. I am at the center of the helipad right now. Let me show you the symbol H that we normally see in a helipad. There is also an agriculture research center right uh, uh, at this uh, place. Let me just turn around and show it to you. This is the agriculture research center or the Krishi Vigyan Kendra here at Tabo. It's close right now and very close to this helipad. Let me show you the view around first. This place is completely surrounded by the snow covered mountains. That's the agriculture research center. It's very cold at the moment. The sun should be up above the mountains any moment now. And I'm waiting here to capture that beautiful sunrise moment. As per the conversation with the locals, the research on apple, apricot, pear and almond is done here as to how these fruits can be grown in such harsh conditions. Such clear blue sky and the movement of clouds against this vast snow covered mountain was indeed a treat to the eyes in this freezing weather. Now see this view of the sunrise where the sun is hidden behind the clouds and its rays appear to fan across the sky. Just enjoy this view with me. The plan for today is uh, to visit the uh, Tabo Monastery, then visit the Dhankar uh, Monastery and then we will uh, drive along the outskirts of the Pin Valley National Park and then finally reach uh, Kaza. But uh, here in Tabo today we will also be uh, covering you know what is called as the caves and there is a history behind this place uh, and I will tell you very soon. The drive towards Kaza will be very beautiful so please uh, stay tuned with me and watch this video till the end. This is the far off view of the Tabo Monastery. Also in the mountains you can see some caves. We will visit them later. First we need to have breakfast. So I am going to taste the Tibetan breakfast and uh, let you know how it is. Mr. Funsuk is right here with us. For the breakfast today we have the Tibetan bread, potatoes and the Sibakthon tea. This Tibetan bread is a soft fluffy bread with a little butter on top of it. Tirku is the local name. Mm. That's nice. Something different to taste. Tabo Monastery is situated at an altitude of 3050 meters in Lahul and Spiti district in Himachal Pradesh in North India. It is one of the oldest Buddhist pilgrimage centers in the Trans Himalayan region. Held in high regard by Tibetan Buddhists, 
Tabo is second in importance after Tolling Gompa in Tibet. The monastery is spread over an area of 6300 square meters. Kala Chakra Stupa was inaugurated here in 2009. Tabo Monastery is the oldest earthen Buddhist monastery in the Himalayan region to have survived unchanged and comparatively well intact. It was established over a thousand years ago. It was established in the year AD 996. There are many stupas, all of which are made in mud and have been standing like this for more than thousand plus years now. Standing on this wooden flooring in the cold early morning and basking in the sunlight was a different experience altogether for me. This place has so much of a history. The monastery houses priceless collection of tanakas, the scroll paintings, manuscripts, well. preserved statues frescoes and extensive murals that cover almost every wall hence people affectionately refer to them as the ajanta of the himalayas the secret it holds of it 1000 plus years of its existence the sheer beauty of the artistic expression through the ages the serenity in its unassuming exterior the beauty of its simplicity is all a must visit must experience tabo monastery is protected by the archaeological survey of india as a national historic treasure of india tabo is also referred as the daughter monastery to the tolling monastery in nagri western tibet over the 1000 plus years of its existence tabo has seen a lot from attacks of ladakhi kings to earthquakes the manuscripts of the monastery have a lot of stories to tell the monastery was rebuilt after the earthquake of 1975 and in 1983 a new dukhang or the assembly hall was constructed now let me get inside it is uh, one of the oldest uh, buddhist uh, monastery here in the himachal region let me get inside but as the uh, mobile phone and the camera is not allowed i will just leave the camera here and uh, let me just uh, get inside uh, quickly and this is also called the picture treasure and this is the entrance i mean I'm not having words to describe. Uh, you know, it's a different style that I am seeing it for the first time in my life. And what we see in the other temples are, you know, something which is on the floor that we are placing it. But over here, it is kind of you know those 3D structures placed on the wall. It's something that you need to really see. And uh, there are a lot of paintings which I believe does not depict any life of any uh, particular person or any event. but there are many paintings all around the walls and uh, you should actually uh, visit this uh, monastery whenever you are here as i was returning back this board caught my attention it is the millennium monastery guest house and i became curious to find out how an accommodation would look like here let's quickly get inside and find out the complete details about this guest house you can click on the link above or find in the description box So if you are coming for the first time to Tabo and if you are not sure about the accommodation then this is the second option I am providing other than the Phonsuk homestay. Now we must say a bye to Tabo and head towards Gaza. Trust me with a very heavy heart you will want to leave the place. The place is so beautiful. The whole of Tabo is so small that you can just cover by walk. We are now trying to find where the caves are. Finally, we figured out the entry to the caves. Once you exit out of the Tabo gate, I guess in less than 1 km, you will find this entrance on your right hand side. We need to take the steps that leads towards the mountain where the caves are.
This is the way I have walked through towards the cave. I still need to climb up to reach the caves. These are the caves we were talking about. It looks very near and easy, but trust me, it is still very steep and I'm trying to figure out how to reach there. At the same time, see the beautiful view of the Tabo village. Finally, this is the cave. There is another one cave here which has a small entrance kind. Let's see what is inside the cave. Oh my goodness, this is a really a big one. This cave is completely dark inside. You can barely stand. I guess it must be around five to five and a half feet high. There are other caves. They are small but sufficient enough to take shelter if it rains. Now if you look at the top, there are other smaller caves where hardly one or two people can get inside. See how steep this climb was from this view. Make sure you are wearing a shoes and coming here to get a firm grip on these loose gravels. See this is another cave just above the bigger cave we saw down. These are the caves where the monks used to meditate. Now we return back and resume our journey back towards Kaza, which is our destination today. As we drive the snow capped mountains towards my left hand side and these barren mountains on the right hand side was indeed a view that we could never forget. Finally, a goodbye to Tabo as we are crossing this iron bridge. The water is so clear that you will really feel like going near. At the same time, I must tell you the water is freezing cold. Also the roads, trust me, you will forget whether they are good or bad in front of this picturesque view. Don't be surprised to see steep mountain edges on one side, the beautiful river flowing and the snow-capped mountains. This is going to be the view throughout now. Suddenly when you see such flat, broad land, you are also surprised amongst these huge mountains. See the blind curve leading you once again to such vast flat land. It's indeed beautiful. This is the time where you want to be on your own bike. And that's also the reason a large number of people traveling on their bikes in this route. Wow, look at this view. Suddenly from that vast flat road, I am once again on the curvy road and suddenly I realize that those vast flat roads are no more. As you can see, the roads are wet at some places. We were heading towards Kaza at almost the end of the winter and once summer starts, the water would start flowing on these roads and making some stretch really difficult to cross as you would have seen in some vlogs. We were lucky to not encounter such situations so far or you can also say we missed that adventure. Well, there are always two sides of a coin. This is a very common sight in this region, how much I envy them as even I had initially planned the trip to go by bike but decided to hire a car. I will cover all that in a separate vlog behind this decision. These are narrow roads and only one vehicle can go at a time so please try with caution.
The roads are pretty bad. Some potholes filled with water. We are only happy that the water is not flowing across these roads. Else, that would have become challenging. Gaza is still around 28 km. The topography of this land is breathtaking, and it will leave you stunned. Though the drive from Tabo to Gaza is just 46 km in this region, the whole thing is about experiencing nature. All the time depends upon you as to how much time you want to dedicate to observe this beautiful nature. Just ensure that you reach your destination before the sunset. This place is certainly a photographer's delight. Looks like now the Dhankar Monastery is very close. We can see the village. The place we are now heading is the Dhankar Monastery, which was once the capital of Spiti in the 17th century. Dhankar Monastery is centrally located in the Spiti region. It is situated in Lahore and Spiti district of Himachal Pradesh and North India. It offers panoramic view of the Spiti Valley. Dhankar is situated at the confluence of Spiti and the Pen rivers. Dhankar Monastery is one of the five main Buddhist centers and tourist destinations in the Spiti region. The 7th century Buddhist monastery is the second highest in the world after the Key Monastery and an important center of Buddhist learning since the 7th century. The rest of the journey we will continue in my next episode. In the next episode, we will enter the Dhankar Monastery and see how this monastery rests on the edge of a cliff. The drive along the Pin Valley will not allow you to blink your eyes. We then reach the Kungri Monastery, which is a must-watch attraction in the Pin Valley. The journey then resumes through the breathtaking views and we finally reach Gaza. Thank you for watching this video. If you have liked the information, then please do subscribe and share the link with others. Thank you.